So here comes our judge for the toy group tonight. This is Zena Thorne Andrews. Her Drakesley kennel, famous for Irish wolfhounds and miniature wire-haired dachshunds. I think it's something over 140 champions in those A breeds. Remarkable record. So here they come. The first of the toys, the little monkey-faced Affen Pincher. And here comes the Australian Silky, the Australian Silky Terrier. White coat, black nose and eyes, the Bichon Frise. The Bolognese. And another little of the same Bichon family, the Bolognese. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. So you're responsible for the judging today, aren't you? At least of one of the and, sexes. And, and, and here is the Cavalier King Charles, and uh, he's just looking a little tired now. He showed perfectly earlier. And here's the long coat Chihuahua. And now the smooth coat Chihuahua. And the and sp little the smooth. The Chinese crested. Here comes the Chinese crested. The Coton de Toulier. The Coton de Toulier. Still going really well. It's a long day for some of these little dogs. And uh, tail up, happy face. And here's the English Toy Terrier, distinctive, high-stepping action. Again, looking just a little the bit uh, diffident on the carpet here. Here's the Griffon coming in now. The Havanese. Little Griffon Bruxellois followed by the Havanese. And now the Italian Greyhound. The high stepping Italian Greyhound, a picture of elegance. Certainly one of the most graceful the in this group. Chin. The little Japanese chin. That's a cheeky face. The King Charles Spaniel. Here's the other of the Royal Spaniels, the King Charles. Quite different in the head from the Cavalier. The Often known as the lion. Charlie. And the little lion dog, the Lurvchen. The Maltese. And here is the Maltese. White coat, dark black pigment. Now we have the miniature pincher. The miniature pincher. The papillon. The butterfly dog, the papillon, coming next. He is like Pekinese. a spread butterfly. Spread wings of a butterfly. And here's the little Pekingese. A little reluctant to come into the big ring, I think. The perky pom, brisk action, a little jaffa on legs. Here comes the pug. And here's the pug, always a popular breed in this group. And finally, the Yorkshire <laughs> Terrier. Can't make up his mind which side he wants to go on. <laughs> and the last of our toy group, this is the Yorkshire Don't Terrier. For the toy group commentary. Thank you very much, Graham. It's now my pleasure, along with Kim, to commentate for you on the second of the exciting groups here at Grass 2017 on the second day. So, our very experienced judge, So, Zena Thorne Andrews taking the opportunity to walk the line and take a look at the best of breeds that have been sent through to her by all the judges who've been working so hard all day today. One of them, of course, are you. There's your Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. 
How do they strike you, Frank? First well, look? there's a lot of quality here. A couple of them are a bit diffident coming in on the on the carpet, but it's a big ring atmosphere with lots of lights, lots of noise. A lovely outline, the curving outline of the Italian Greyhound. The distinctive hindquarters of the Lurfchen. A very nice papillon. Gorgeous outline, the papillon actually standing there. So the first of our toy best of breeds developed in Germany, one of the oldest toy breeds in Europe, the little monkey-like black devil, the Affenpinscher. Sturdy, short-backed, harsh coat, no trim, of course. We're looking for a small head here, broad brow, and of course, the little monkey-like expression, which is so characteristic of this breed. Lively, strutting gait, lift those feet high, but not a hackney action. And this one's come from America to win. It's an American champion, Dark Old Devil's Advocate, and uh, a big winner there, bred in England. That high stepping action, Jessica, we sometimes call it the floating goose step. <laughs> That's a fantastic description. <laughs> So, uh, this should be... There it is, the floating goose step. That <laughs> yeah. is so... It fits it beautifully. This lovely monkeyish face there. Now, the distinctive colours of the Australian Silky Terrier. This one is Limatine Rage in Red. And the Australian Silky Terrier was developed by a cross between the Australian Terrier, a working dog, and the Yorkshire Terrier. And it, it has inherited some of the characteristics of both Terrier temperament and Yorkshire Terrier colours. And that coat should be straight and fine and glossy, shouldn't it, Frank? The colours are very important. They should be the blue and rich tan and a silky texture. They were originally known as the Sydney Silky because the, the breeder, the most important breeder, lived in Sydney. It was called the Sydney Silky. This is champion Pamplona Just Magic, seven years old, so come from veteran, originally from Tenerife, the Bichon Frise, developed in France. We're looking for a balanced, smart little dog, close coat with sort of loose white curls and a plume of a tail, and very characteristic, that contrasting dark pigment. Substance in a small package. This might be a toy breed, but we don't want a lightweight. And the word Bichon means white dog, and the frise is the loose corkscrew curls, the dark pigmentation setting off those dark eyes. Very alert and a lovely outline. Of course, Michael Code, a very experienced handler there with the Bichon frise. Retired for three years, this one, and then come back today to beat the lot. And here we have a, another Bichon family breed. It's the Bolognese from Italy. This is Irish champion Little White Wonder Othello Matteo. It's a long name for a little dog. There is sturdy and square, and again the same loose flocks of white coat and dark pigmentation. Although there are similarities, Frank, to look at, the coat is completely different. What's it like to get your hands into? These are loose flocks of coat and there's no trimming. They just have their feet tidied up. Um, the, the Bichon should be, we've just seen before, has a softer coat and there's a little more trimming to it. But these are gorgeous characters, sturdy and square, typifies the breed. This is a lovely shape, this one, and full of self-importance on the move. I like it. Very much so, and Otty was the top UK rare breed in 2016, top puppy in 2015. 
The little bolognese. Beautiful picture. One of the Royal Spaniels, this champion castle witch rave on with Rusmick, two and a half years old, known as Ronnie at home. The toy Spaniels can be traced back to the 16th century. They were such popular companion animals, active, graceful, friendly, that gentle expression, terribly important. And with cavaliers, the skull should be almost flat between those ears that are quite high set. This one, a Blenheim, which is the rich chestnut and white, and it won the, the best male award under Meet Myself today. And uh, Zena's already seen it because um, the two judges didn't agree for best of breed, and Zena came in and chose the dog. However, he's gone a little bit tired now in the big ring atmosphere, which is a great shame. It sometimes happens, the dog's had a long day. Lovely picture, compact, lovely top line and large dark eyes. Lovely steady movement there. He's a beautiful mover. And now the first of the Chihuahuas, it's the long coat Chihuahua, and it's a famous one, champion Holly L. Topaz Chancer, four and a half years old, come today to win for Leslie Adams from Surrey. Now the Chihuahua is reputedly the smallest breed of the wo world and it comes from the state of Chihuahua in Mexico. Slightly longer than tall when you look at the outline, level-backed, that high-set tail carried with a beautiful plume in this case, and those ears never stop working, do there's, they? There's flared ears and dome skull and large dark eyes. They're full of self-importance. Beautiful top line, balance on the move. And that long coat should be flat, maybe with a very slight wave, soft to the touch. And now we have the smooth coat Chihuahua, the same breed standard, but of course the coat completely different. This is champion Tiny Toy White Wolf at your own, just 20 months old. William was judged today by Pam Tranter, owned by Mr. Steve Rooney. Small and dainty, but full of character. And as far as this dog's concerned, he's the biggest one in the group ring this evening. The smooth coat and the long coat chihuahua have the same standard. Only differentiation is the coat. This smooth coat is quite a dense coat. Um, the, of course, the long coat has the fringing. But look at the tail carried over the back like a scimitar. And again, <laughs> full of alertness, this large ears shown there. And although they're small dogs, they have to be sound, they have to be well constructed and be able to move soundly to, an, to allow them to lead healthy lives. Now we have the Chinese Crested. So a very exotic breed, this one multi-champion Nalufa Molossus Grazzi, uh, exotic breed with this here, the hairless variety, hot to the touch, with fringing, a mane of hair, fringing on the ears, and protective veil over the joints of the, the pastons and the feet. When my kids first started watching Crufts, they used to call this one My Little Pony <laughs> because the hair pattern is similar. Dead level top line, slightly longer than tall. I believe they come in two types, either cobbier or deer-like, the finer, racier ones. Yes. A very happy temperament here. One of the breed features are these long toes, giving them flexibility and large erect ears covered in hair, dark almond eyes coming towards you. And this long, fine foreface, full of quality here. All the way from Russia. The Coton de Tullier, this is uh, the royal dog of Madagascar, comes from the island of Tula. 
The name comes from the cotton texture of that coat, which is long and fine and single. Many of the coats we've been talking about are double with a finer, softer undercoat. This is just a single layer, black pigment in the nose, round eyes, slightly shorter foreface framed by those high set ears. And this one's come all the way from West Virginia in the USA to, to win. The, the outline of the Coton de Tullia is very distinctive. There's a rise over the loin and a fall to the tail. Now, that is breed specific. The tail carried correctly here. Smart, free striding action, and actually quite deep bodied when you get your hands under that coat. This five-year-old dog is called Monkey at home, always relaxed, apparently nothing gets to him, not even the group ring at Crufts. Now, the English Toy Terrier. Um, I've talked about the miniaturization of sporting breeds, and here's an example of one. The English Toy Terrier is bred down from the Manchester Terrier, uh, from the Terrier group finer boned but sharing the same features of black and tan coloration but much finer daintier and with a high stepping action the long narrow wedge of a head topped with those characteristic candle flame ears very important in this breed although they're a toy breed they're st still very game and could see could still see off the odd rodents, I'm sure. So this is very fine and dainty here. The black and tan colouring characteristic on that thick, glossy coat. And what, what are the things on the front legs? On the tan markings, we just see the black thumb, thumb mark, which is important and a breed feature. A black spot just above the pastern. Champion cat dance mini the minx at Fenimore is a six-year-old Griffon Bruxellois, another one with a little cheeky monkey face. They hail from Belgium with a touch of the Affen Pincher in them. Can be rough or smooth coated, red, black or black and tan. This a gorgeous red. Cobby balanced and square is what we're looking for. And this is one of the great character breeds. They're full of character. They're cobby, big ribbed, and again, this crisp red coat here. The head's quite large in proportion, isn't it, Frank? And a, a, a wide skull, big dark eyes. And those tiny little ears, high set and folded over. They were used originally as, as um, guard dogs for the stables and, uh, and as uh, rodent dogs. They kept, kept down the vermin in the stables. Hmm. Cheeky little griff on Bruxellois. And now the Havanese, the national dog of Cuba. It is one of the Bichon family, which is sometimes known as the Bichon Havanese. Um, it is compact, comes in a variety of colours. Again, the fairly broad skull. The top line should rise slightly to the tail set. The judge just feeling the coat texture there. It should be silky. And they should have a jaunty gait. This, this one has come from Merseyside from, to win and uh, with her owner, Mrs. Catherine Muscroft. And that can coat, coat can come in any colour that's acceptable, can't it? With a, a wave or a very slight curl to it. Mm. You can see particularly at the back of the dog there. Dead level top line. It's um, relatively new in the showings of this country. They've only had challenge certificates, so they could become champions for the last few years. So, but they're very popular, very friendly dogs, full of character and confidence. Small, sturdy, lively little Havanese. Elegance personified this, 
A greyhound in miniature, the Italian greyhound. Their heritage goes all the way back to Pompeii, although in this country, since around about the 17th century, frequently depicted in old paintings. Fine, long head, rose ears folded back there, deep, narrow chest and that arching top line, very characteristic. Oh, showing off wonderfully the high stepping action and curved loin. They're fine boned and dainty. You haven't to be clumsy footed around an Italian greyhound. Oh, goodness, no, you wouldn't want to trip over that. But they've dog. got beautiful coat and skin, and they're a joy to live with and love home comforts, but also like a good gallop in the park. And grooming, you groom this dog with a beautiful velvet <laughs> pad. <laughs> Now the Japanese chin, Sangria celebration of Shionag, and uh, as one from a big entry today for Joyce McFarlane, it's a cobby dog. It came originally from China, but a gift to the Empress of Japan meant that the breed became very popular and was developed in Japan, hence the name. Should always be a stylish mover, this one. That coat is long, soft, straight, and silky. They've got such a distinctive head, haven't they? Yes, it, it's, you know, they've got this padded muzzle, this rounded skull, and dark eyes, this lovely padded plushness in the face, and a squint in the corner of the eyes, a little bit of white showing in the corner of the eye. Compact, cobby, but fine boned. They also come in red and white, that's shades of lemon or red. The black and white is the more frequently seen colour. The gorgeous little Charlie, this one champion, a mantra regal duke, almost three years old. He's known as Kenny at home with Tracy Jackson. Favoured originally by Charles II and a relative, of course, of the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. He's called the English Toy Spaniel in some countries. We need him to be cobby. He's refined, gentle and reserved, and that face is such a characteristic of this breed. Domed head, wide set eyes, low set ears that are always really well feathered. The two, two royal sponsors, the Cavalier and the King Charles, were shown together for a long time and uh, separated only in 1945. Um, originally, the Spaniels had longer faces, but in the 19th century, the flatter-faced breeds became popular, and many breeders went for this domed skull. This one, a gorgeous tricolour. And now the Löwchen, um, champion Giaminelli Cream Cracker, a big winning dog. This is the little line dog, and we see this broad skull, fairly short foreface, and this mane of hair over his forequarters. This silky textured coat. And this, this um, coat is shaved, isn't it, at the back? They, they don't come like that naturally. No. This is the way they're presented, adding to the little lion dog aspect of, of the uh, name. Of course, they were called little lion dogs, and it was thought that the breed attributed them with the strength and power of the lion, and it, they were protective, therefore, for the owner. So they carried some sort of uh, canine folklore with them. Intelligent and affectionate little dogs. They should be strong and active and always with that slightly aloof, proud head carriage. A beautiful eyes, a beautiful headpiece on this dog. Instantly recognizable with that flowing white coat. The Maltese champion, Zumanic Stars and Stripes. Come from America, or oh, it's known as America at home comes from um, Melton Mowbray in Leicestershire, actually, not from America at all. <laughs> Known to have been in Malta way back in the Roman times. 
black pigment, those lovely dark eyes, and this long, straight, silky coat. They can have slight lemon markings sometimes, but always with that contrasting black pigment. Again, this uh, lovely expression from dark eyes. We were looking for a level top line. And free-flowing movement. In the Royal Library of Malta, there's portraits of the breed uh, dating back to 1833, so they're a long-established breed. Plume tail carried over the back, and just look at those little round, black-padded feet kicking out. Now, a judge now looking at the miniature pincher. It's champion Trenson Flumadiddle, and uh, it's a red dog. And again, the pincher is a miniaturized breed from the working breed, the pincher which we'll see in the working group. Short and compact, a wedge-shaped head, sharply pricked ears, and with a high-stepping action. And miniature pinchers are actually allowed a true hackney action, aren't they? Square in outline. Yes, it's the high-stepping action is a breed feature, and it's very difficult to get to high-stepping action with accuracy in the movement. But this dog shows it off nicely, and the top line should slope from withers to the tail set. A very good top line. This one's still a young dog, only 23 months old, but already a champion. Deep-chested, and those feet are almost cat-like, aren't they? And. Uh, Sturdily boned, they're a sturdy breed. The Papillon, named for those ears that look like a butterfly's wings. They can also come in the Faline, which is the moth with folded ears, but this one, beautiful ears. French for butterfly, of course. Papillon, longer bodied, slightly level top line high-set plume tail, and the feet of this breed are described as being hair-like. The coat's abundant, fine, silky and flowing. And this one has come from a very successful kennel in Japan, the Queen Bless Kennel. I've had winners here at Crufts before. Full of quality. We like this when it came in, holding itself very well. Silky textured coat that should be fine and dainty. Positive movement there, though, light and flowing, very light on the toes. There's great appeal. The little papillon. In fact, that's the personification of a toy dog, isn't it? Beautiful. Fa fine, boned, dainty. There's lovely elegance in its long foreface. Now, the Pekingese, a judge going over the sturdy body. This is a a young female, only 23 months of age, Jidoron Kara. The judge picking it up there, they should pick up heavy for their size. And most of the weight of an Pekingese is at the front. They're broad chested and heavy. A true aristocrat, the Pekingese, dating back to the Tang dynasty in China and owned by members of the imperial court. No commoner was allowed to own one at that stage. And this uh, broad chest give them, gives them this wide front action, slightly rolling because it's lighter in the hind quarters. That is a breed typical feature and breed typical movement. The flat skull, broad under jaw, and very important that they have wide nostrils like all the flat faced breeds. Gorgeous, large, round, dark eyes should give them that expression. The cheeky little Pomeranian. This one, Lariva's Tarquin Fly the Bear, just 22 months old. Owned by Avril Corthera Purdy and uh, judged today by Julie Sparrow. Developed here in Britain and first popularized by Queen Victoria was the Pom bred from the German Spitz originally, compact, described as buoyant, a little pocket rocket of a toy dog.
They should have a foxy look, shouldn't they, a Frank? Fo foxy look and expression, and this shortness of back, of relatively, this was spinning around with excitement, and a brisk action, absolutely straight coming towards us, which is correct. Neat little prick ears appearing from all that abundant mane of coat. It, it's the smallest of the Spitz breeds. I always say the orange ones look like a little Jaffa on legs. <laughs> and that coat, surprisingly, is quite harsh, it, isn't it? It should be straight and stand off, but it's not soft to the touch. It should be harsh to the touch, like all the Spitz breeds. The little Jaffa Pomeranian. Now, yes, the pug showing typical stubbornness, wanting her own way here. Um, the, the pug is Catrelma Gina Lola Brigida, and only two years old, and uh, winning best of breed. Two judges today, but again, they couldn't agree for best of breed, and our toy group judge here, Zena, was called in, and she chose the bitch as best of breed. They should have a relatively large head, almost round, short muzzled, and a little wrinkle, especially around those, um, uh, the, across the forehead and around the eyes. Black velvet ears, either rose or button, aren't the, they? The, the breed standard calls for multum in parvo, which means a lot of dog in a, short, in a small space. So they are substantial for their size. And they have this rolling gait full of self importance and a tight twist to the tail. Look at the breadth in that body for such a small dog. And neat black velvet ears, so uh, dark eyes. <laughs> Look. And this is the last of our toy best of breeds, the instantly recognizable Yorkshire Terrier with that beautiful blue and tan coat. Paramount importance in this breed. Long, perfectly straight, glossy, that dark steel blue with the rich, bright tan. Relatively small head for the size of the dog with a flat skull and V-shaped ears, bright in expression. See the lovely tan coloration in the head furnishings. Three shades of tan, darkest at the root, fading to lighter at the ends. Steel blue body coat and a good Yorkshire Terrier coat is cold to the touch, like cool silk. And this is very jaunty in its action, very nice front movement and a lovely head and expression and very good top line. Dead level and quite a nice compact body should, there should be, shouldn't there? Terrier-like, terrier-like in temperament, sturdy. We saw the judge brushing the coat out to feel the texture and the colour. So Zena Thorne Andrews walking the line. She's had a chance to look at all these best of breeds in detail. Who is she going to choose to win the toy group? Again, Zena's always a very decisive judge. Great knowledge. Walking towards the beginning end of the line. And gestured in is the 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 silky and the bichon, the long coat chihuahua, the coton de tulia. In comes the Italian greyhound. The Lurfchen comes in. The Maltese comes forward. Ah, and down to the Yorkshire Terrier. So there is our shortlist for the toy group. The smart outline of the Bichon and the long coat Chihuahua. Distinctive rise over the top line of the Coton. The elegance of the Italian. The clipped hind quarters of the Lurvchen there. So they're just reorganizing themselves so that Zena can see them move again. Her shortlist. 
starting with the Australian Silky Terrier, Limatine Rage in Red, three and a half years old, called Maddy, belongs to Jonathan Malt from Crew in Cheshire, handled by Lisa Malt today. And then we have the Bichon, Pamplona Just Magic, seven years of age now, so uh, lasting well and still full of full of life and vigor and showing well. Then we see the little black pads driving away from us, dark pigment all the way down. Oh, what a picture, that little long coat chihuahua standing there, all to attention. Champion, Holly L. Topaz Chancer, Jeffrey, the little long coat chihuahua. This has gone really well today and is in peak form. Still putting on a really good performance. And now it's the turn of Dr. Handelaide. The jaunty action of the Coton de Tulia, American Grand Champion, Hope Press Monkey Business. Looking really well, actually. Now, this Italian Greyhound has gone really well. High stepping, but still coordinated in its front action. Full of quality. Looks Graceful, like a th lightweight, but still with substance. You can still see the Greyhound in miniature there, can't you? There the, we see why it's called the little lion dog with the, the mane and the clipped hind quarters and the plumed tail. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Maltese is full of beans. <laughs> Wanting to go. Champion Zamanic Stars and Stripes, a big winner, group winner before. Compact, level backed, high set tail. <laughs> and still enjoying the day. That's lovely to see. And the last of our finalists, the Yorkshire Terrier, my precious J.P. Kagayaki. A toy with the temperament of a terrier, full of confidence. Perfect tail set and carriage. And come all the way from Japan to compete here at Crufts. Holding off all the other Yorkshire Terriers to come through to the group tonight and be the last of our finalists. So the boards are being called out. Zena's ready to choose her toy group winner for 2017. It is the Yorkshire Terrier who's come all the way from oh, Japan. Yes. Look at her face. <laughs> Very happy, Odie. The, the, the Yorkshire Terrier put on a great show with wonderful top line and carriage and lovely colour. My precious JP Kagayaki. The long coat chihuahua takes second place. That's Jeffrey Holiel Topaz Chancer from Surrey. Michael Code with the Bichon Frise takes group three. And for fourth, fourth place, it's the Australian, the Silky Terrier. There's a nice win for the breed. So it's the Yorkshire Terrier which will be coming back on Sunday to compete for Best in Show. A little oh, lot. <laughs> owner looks absolutely stunned. The dog's not phased at all. The little Yorkshire Terrier winning best in the toy group for Crufts 2017. Uh, there's Mark Henry presenting the trophy. A dog photographer of great pedigree. He's been photographing British show dogs for many years. And a lovely shot with the owner and the Yorkshire Terrier. My precious, it's called. It'll be even more precious now. Congratulations. You have come all the way from Japan, I understand. Yes, so I'm so happy now. So I, I don't have any words. Oh my gosh, just go, oh my gosh. Now, this is the first time visit for this dog to the UK. 
Uh, no, I have, uh, I have been to many times here. Then this is my f first time for her. Oh, anyway, oh, God. <laughs> so that's her first CC in the UK, but is she a champion in other parts of the world? Uh, yes, she, uh, she won the international champion and Japan champion. And uh, I, I, I'm sure I was showing at the Westminster. Then she won the best, uh, best of winners. So she won a lot. <laughs> so very well traveled. Shizuru, you must be over the moon. <laughs> yes, so, oh my God. Congratulations, Shizuru, the Yorkshire Terrier, the winner of the toy group. So there we have it, Shizuru Kadawaki with my precious JP Kagayaki, all the way from Japan. And wonderful to see her joy at winning. That's marvellous to see. I love the fact that she's just given us a list of all the things this dog has won, but the pleasure of winning best in group at Crafts is unmatchable.